a very warm welcome in the fourth module of week 7 of the course roadmap for patent creation titled procedure for patent filing forms and fees so in this module we will concentrate on what are the different forms which are required when you think about the filing of a patent and how much that statutory fee is there when you decide on filing the patent we have seen that there are that there are fee stages as a uh, when you are filing you have to give certain fee statutory fee when you are uh, giving the request for examination you have to give fees and then there are so many uh, what we can say if you want to uh, do some other changes and what we can say that you want to uh, file uh, some opposition so all these kinds of things are there so we will see how many forms are there and according to that for that particular form which what is the amount of that fee that you have to give as a statutory fee to the government okay so here we start now this is mentioned in the uh, when we think of, of the patent act in the patent act it is mentioned in rule 7 that what are the fees we have to pay first schedule of a patent act 1970 it contains a description relevant to the fees patent forms are mentioned under rule 8 okay now this second schedule of a patent act it contains a description of that relevant forms through the notification of 2014 the government of india has added a third category of applicant as a small entities which were earlier not mentioned every time what happen the as time goes amendments will take place in the act and there will be change in maybe some or the other rules some change in the fees will be there some change in the what we can say the categories and all kind of thing that changes may be there and that will be notified now when we are thinking of patent filing we know that in india there are three categories which are considered we will see the details of that but uh, that th this category of a small entities which is a uh, added in a 2014 we will see what other categories are there when we will go through this model okay then there were uh, 27 forms were there and then form 28 it was included intrude, uh, and it was introduced uh, to accompany this introduction of a small entity means whenever that amendment have done that considering the small entity at that time this form 28 is added so that kind of some what we can say the uh, amendments whatever are whatever have done during the how that patent act evolves just to give you glimpses we have included this thing now moving further in india as already we have seen that there is a small entity now what are the other three what we can say the uh, categories which are considered in the uh, when you are considering the filing of a patent and what are that three categories are there so first category is a natural person or it uh, will be a startup which is a recently included again now uh, what is the difference that when we are seeing that there are three categories what is the reason behind that thing if you see the fee the fee structure is different for these three categories so natural person and or startup is considered as a one category small entity right that small entity is considered as a second category so if that small entity that is a micro small medium enterprises okay so msme if that msme decides on filing the patent they have a separate fee structure right so this is a second category and the third category is a others so those who are not natural persons those who are not coming under the category of startups those who are not coming under the category of small entity all this will be considered as a others right so these are the three main categories in the what we can say when we consider patent filing in india now any uh, proof is required that if you are a small entity what proof is required msme registration that whatever the uh, uh, certificate is there obviously that certificate is certificate is mandatory and that you have to give when you are filing the patent under small entity category what about startup same thing if you want to file a patent under startup category you have to show the certificate that you are enrolled under startup so when we consider this uh, specific categories for natural person obviously you will not require anything to give that obviously that there is no any spe uh, specific what we can say the 
uh, certificates and all that thing. But when you are claiming it is under small entity, when you are claiming it is under a startup category, then you have to give the relevant certificate supporting the application. Okay. So, these are the three categories. Now, what is the condition in USA? We will just compare how in, uh, in, in India we are seeing that three categories are there. What are the categories in USA? In USA, if you file a patent, there are three categories again. So, there is a small entity that is a one category, then micro entity that is a another category and then the remaining that is a normal whatever others we are considering here that category. So, these three categories are there in USA and they have given a clear guidelines that okay, who comes under micro entity, who comes under small entity and you have to give the financial proof accordingly when it should be considered under a micro entity. Because when you see the fee, di fee difference, you can observe that the fee difference is a major fee difference you can observe in these three categories, right? Obvious, obviously, in India also and USA also if you see. Now, we will see what this fee structure is, just to give you an idea. We will see the details now, but here I am giving you the little bit idea about the fee structure. So, when you are filing a patent, right, normal filing, how much fee you have to give? The whatever the fee is 1750 when you are filing a individual that is a category. Now, before going into details here, I, I just uh, share here that here there are two modes of filing that is online filing and physical filing. Now, this fee structure whatever you are seeing here, it is related to physical filing. If you consider a online filing, there is a what we can say the advantage, some perks we can say that in online filing obviously this fees, fee difference is there. So, for example, I can give you idea what is that difference is. If you are filing a patent in physically, that physical filing is there, fee is 1750, right. But if you do same thing online, the fee is 1600. So, there is a difference of difference of 150 rupees when you consider online mode and that uh, physical mode it, you have to give 150 rupees extra, right. So, you can decide whether you want to go for physical filing or you want to go for a online filing. So, this is for individual. What about MSME? The same uh, MSME if you want to uh, that MSME want to file a patent they have to pay 4400. So, patent application by startup and individual it is just 1750, if it is a MSME it is 4400. What about others? Big organization, MNCs, this category they have to fee, they have to give fee that is a 8800. So, you can see the fee difference almost it is going one fourth what we can say one as to four ratio is there if you can observe especially between the small entity and uh, means it is a it is going a doubling uh, what we can say that difference is there. Now, means individual is filing only it, it has to give just 1750 and the others they have to give 8000 rupees uh, 8800 rupees right that same patent filing, but that fee structure that difference is there. Okay. Now, physical filing and online filing, the difference is of 150 rupees and that we ha I have just noted, I have just uh, shared this with you. If you are a continuous, uh, continuous doing this patent filing thing, then always better you should have a digital signature and better you should opt a online filing. But if you are filing some one patent in a year or something like that, then physical filing can be done. Now, again the important thing is that generally patent attorney, patent agent it is expected that they should do a online filing, right. It is not expected that they should do a physical filing, right. So, because patent offices, right, they are they, they are moving towards making that office paperless, everything is on online, ok. So, this is something about the administration which is uh, uh, there in the patent offices. Now, is there any limit of a pages when you are filing a patent? Yes. The limit is that if in Indi considering India, the limit is that it is expected that your patent document should be mag having maximum 30 pages. Now, if you uh, if you say okay, I have a uh, my, my invention is like I cannot describe my invention in one that 30 pages, then if there are number of pages if increase what, what should be the thing? You have to give a extra fee for that. Now, how much extra fee you have to give? If you are individual, you are giving 180 rupees per page or per sheet, right. 
if you are a small entity you are giving a 440 rupees per page and if you are a big organizations mnc's you have to give a 880 rupees per page beyond that 30 so from 31st per page you have to give that extra amount that is about the pages what about claims if you are thinking about a claims whether there is a limit yes for claims also there is a limit what is that limit you can have maximum 10 claims in the patent as a normal patent so 30 pages and 10 claims now if you have a extra claims because there are patents having 1000 claims also so what will happen in that case beyond 10 claims for every e every claim that each a claim it will cost like if you are an individual you have to give 350 rupees if you are a msme you have to give 880 rupees and if you are a corporate you have to give 1750 rupees per claim so when you are drafting a patent you can think about all this thing that is a number of pages and number of claims but obviously if invention for that particular invention if it demands that increase in claim or increase in number of pages obviously you can't compromise them right we have to take that what we can say you have to use that and you have to give the description and claim part very clearly okay so this is the case in india we'll just compare it with the usa what is the condition in usa that three categories we have seen right now in usa that difference is like a 300 dollar that is that big corporates and all then 150 dollar and then 75 dollar that is the difference in the fee what about the pages in india we have seen that there are 30 page limits that is a page limit is like a 30 pages what about usa in usa 100 pages are considered as a normal thing that whatever fees is mentioned it will consider that 100 pages beyond that that is a if up to 50 pages so 100 plus 50 up to that 50 pages the condition that how much amount you have to pay that the fee will change as a 400 dollar 200 dollar and a 100 dollar so if your patent is instead of 100 pages it is a say 150 pages and if you are an um, individual then you have to pay 100 dollar instead of a 75 dollar as a statutory fee when you are filing your patent in USM. okay and what about claims claims in india we have seen 10 claims is a normal limit and in usa what is the condition 20 limit 20 claims is considered as a normal and beyond that you have to give payment like 100 dollar 50 dollar and 25 dollar that is the what we can say you have to give if your claims are more than 20 what about a europe when you are filing patent in europe um, uh, european union what is the condition here that you will not see any categorization the fees whatever is like uh, in euros right so you have to give fees 210 euros right now if you have that uh, what we can say the in india we have seen 30 30 pages limit in uh, europe it is a 35 is the limit if there is a extra sheet then you have to give 15 euro per sheet right so that is a case when you are filing patent in europe that is european union what about a claim the thing is that if uh, that 235 per claim you have to give for 15 to 50 claims and then what we have to say that 585 for a uh, next claims so up to 15 that is fine it is included as a normal thing but uh, that 14 after that you have to give 235 for euros per claim and after 50 if the number of claims is there then it will be considered as a 585 for next claim right so this is the con what we can say the in short it to give you idea about a uh, fees now what about the forms we will see now the forms now here if you see the form forms there are what we can say the I have just uh, mentioned here in the sheet you can see that there are fee then there is a form number and there is a title okay so that form number one it is for like a application for grant of a patent and then we have also mentioned there under which a section that is considered so section 7 
is there and according to section 7 if you see then there is a section 54 and then 135 that are related to form 1 and you have already seen that the fee is like a 1750 right that is the case form 2 if you see form 2 what is this case it is for provisional or complete specification filing it is under section 10 and there is no fee that is 1750 you have already given uh, form 2 you are giving along with the form 1 you need not to give any extra fee for that we have taken example of individual so we have written here as a 1750 right now then next is a form 3 again it is a free because it is you are giving along with form 1 it gives a statement and undertaking under section 8 that undertaking you are giving under section 8 rule 12 right then next is like a form 4 what is this for a request for extension of time if you want to use that facility you are filing it on that uh, form 4 you are using it and you have to pay 530 rupees per month extension right so per month you have to if you want say that uh, 3 months ex extension then 530 into 3 that much amount you have to pay and it is according to section 53 142 and rule 1380 and 130 then if you want to file that form 5 that is a declaration of inventorship you are using a form 5 it is again free right then there is a form 6 what it is about claim or request regarding any change in a applicant for a patent section uh, for a patent and sections involved are the 20 section number 20 is involved here right then any fee is there yes it is a 880 rupees fine then form 7 form 8 you can just go through that thing form 9 right so you just go through this thing okay now next what we will see now that we will just go in a details of that I, I have just given you the idea about the fees now we will visit a patent office uh, site so that you will come to know that okay where exactly that fee schedule is hosted on the patent office so you can just visit that and whatever activity you want to do you can just see what the fees is there also we will see the forms it is a schedule 2 so that you can see that what is that form 2 is what exactly is covered there so we will now visit a patent office site okay now we have seen this site earlier also and now just click on the administration right and then you can see here form and fees okay so here you can see here the first schedule is hosted here that is a fees right now this fees part is here and then you can see here that is a form 1 to 5 that is form 1 to you can see here up to 30 that forms are hosted here now we will just click on the form 1 and we will see what that form 1 is so here is a form 1 now here if you see the details in the form 1 you can see that this application number filing date all these details will be given by patent office now here what information you will fill check here the type of application so you have to give the type that is whether it is ordinary whether it is a conventional whether it is a pcta national phase so that details you will add there the next is like a details of the applicant like a, that is the name of the applicant what is the nationality of applicant what is the country of residence and then the whole what we can say the details of the address that you have to enter next is a the category whether you are filing it under natural person category or you are filing under small entity category or you are using the next status that is a others so whatever the category you are opting that you will consider here then you have to give details of the inventor now next moving further you can see that the further details which are the that is a details about the inventor you are giving then after that you are giving details about the invention that is a title of invention and then you can just go through the what we can say the other details whatever are there that that service what we get whatever the uh, service address of that service is there and then you can just note down we have already said that the uh, patent office is 
moving towards paperless and so they are expecting you to give email id mobile phone etc and please note that you will give it very you will give this details without fail okay so this email then phone number and all these details will be provided here right and then the further details you can just go in further details whatever are there given in this form and you can just fill the form accordingly now here the in the last page what the important thing is that you have to give you have to sign that document so here important that is a signature is a most important then that, that is a declaration by the applicant that is the most important thing is there now the obviously on form 1 there is a signature of a inventor also so you can see here that the details are there and declaration of inventor is there and declaration that signature date that details of the inventor has to be given if there are more than one inventor that inventors will sign if more than one applicant is there more than one applicant will sign but every inventor whatever mention in that patent document and whoever is a applicant everybody has to sign this form unless until the signatures of every inventor or a applicant is there this form will not be considered as a complete form so this is a form 1 now we will just give you what the, we will see two or three more forms so that you can get the idea about what the other forms are there so we'll go again on the that list and in the list you just see that if you want to file a opposition right so we will just see the form 7 and this is the form 7 you can see and you can just fill details whatever expected there okay then you can just go through the details what are the forms and that uh, uh, for which thing which form has to be used for example if you want to do some changes clerical changes are there or amendments you have to do then you are using a form 13 right so you can just go through and you can uh, use these forms now one more thing i i would just highlight here form 28 is there if you are a small entity you have to give this form 28 compulsory without fail without fail you have to give this form along with the patent application then form 26 is there that is if you are giving authority to patent agent then you have to give form 26 and this form 26 is to be given on a stamp paper that is 100 rupees stamp paper so now you can visit this site you can visit and check that different forms what that forms are form uh, for that particular thing and then you can get them Uh, you can just download that form and use now next thing is that that is the fees we have seen just now the fee structure now we will see how the details that details of the fee structure are there so i'll just click on the fees and this fee details will be there available and accordingly you can just choose whatever action you want to take related to patent you can just check that what is that uh, action you have to take you just check down what is that form is and you just see according to category whether you are a natural person whether you are a small entity or you are a, in a other category you just check that thing and you can give fees accordingly now here you note down that if you see this first part that is a e filing right if you are doing a online filing the fee structure is that e filing fee structure is there and if you are doing a physical filing that physical filing structure is given there okay so you can see this differences now we will just see here that we have said that okay the form 1 is there you can see that form 1 then you can see that details that is form 1 is for what exactly that details are ex explained there and then you can see the categories which are means according to categories how the fee structure is there right so in this way now you can just browse through you can just go through this details and you can just check down okay what are the different that the forms are there and for that particular form what that fee structure is there right just check this thing you can take it you take your time and you can go through this one more thing i would like to mention here that maintenance fee is one of the important thing means when once a patent is granted for after granting you have to give a maintenance fees now here i i will take your attention to that maintenance fee you can see the difference in the maintenance fee which is given by individual 
the maintenance fee it is given by msme and the maintenance fee which is given by the other we will just check every year you have to give we will uh, see that example now you can see here that maintenance suppose we take a example of this that is before the expiration of the 12th year in respect of the 13th year if you are giving the fee you just check the fees here the individual have to give the that fee amount is a 5300 then msme amount is 13200 and if we, if the organization mnc organization is there other than this that is other than startup or individual or msme whosoever is there that organizations either academic institute or um, whatever the corporates are there you can just see the difference the fee is that the 26400 now you can imagine that the difference in that fee which is given by individual and difference which is given by corporate and you have to give fee for every year right so you can just go through this details of a fees and um, it is available on the site you know now where exactly you have to go i will just show you how you have uh, how we have entered here we have entered into the ip india site and then we have clicked on this administration part and then we click on this forms and fees and there you have received the details about the forms and fees okay now next moving further here you now receive the idea about uh, forms and fees okay now we will see the procedural part what exactly the procedural part is we have just seen forms and fees now we will see what is the procedural part so we have seen that okay there are 1 to 30 forms are there right and we have seen the fee structure also including the fee whatever given for the maintenance also we have noticed right now if you want to file a form so many forms are there which are the exactly necessary forms when you are uh, filing that patent so, form number 1, 2, 3, 5 and 26 if 26 if you are taking help of a patent attorney or patent agent is required, but when you are filing a patent most important what we can say it is a normal application is there you will uh, file that is a form number 1, 2, 3, 5 and then you will give the requisite fee right that is suppose you are an individual you are giving a fee amount that is a physical filing is there 1750 rupees now as if it is a complete specification we have already suggested that better to give a request for examination along with this uh, uh, form that complete specification filing only so in that case what you can give that you can give that form 18 also and obviously you have to give a form 9 although there is no separate fee for that publication request for publication in a normal course but you have to give that form you have to submit that form that is form number 9 for publication and form number 18 for examination and obviously for examination you have to give the that statutory fees you have to give right so you are giving that means you are submitting the forms like 1 2 3 5 form number 9 form number 18 and then the form 26 if you are what we can say give it, taking a help of a attorney or patent agent on the stamp paper you are giving that authority authority to patent agent or a lawyer that uh, attorney patent attorney okay so this uh, form 13 is that if you want to change any address or the uh, address or any other details if you want to change you can take help of 13 now you know the site you know where the forms are hosted if anything you want to amend in the application you can just see which is that form and then what is the fee relevant to that because we have seen that okay this fee for this form we we have just seen that thing and then accordingly you can just follow the procedure okay now moving further now after going through this form and that fees right we we have pretty well got idea about what is that forms are there what are the fees are there which is the site is there where you can get these forms and fees we will just watch this video okay in today's session we are going to discuss about how the conduct of the inventor or the applicant should be with the patent attorney most of the time when inventor or applicant 
is uh, trying to identify who is the best attorney or uh, should I disclose something to him, should I not. There is always a uh, 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 confusion going in his mind. But at the same time, I would like to point out uh, very clearly that patent attorney is the architect or doctor to your patent application. He closely see your inventions and then uh, work out a pro proper patent strategy for you and it becomes very important for you to disclose maximum to the patent attorney. So while uh, discussing with you, he tried to identify how many inventive concepts your invention could have. So according to the patent law, only, uh, only one patent concept should be included in one patent application. So it becomes relevant for him to identify how many inventive concepts your application would be having. Further, he would like to know what are your possible markets, uh, where the technology is being developed, that means where the R&D is going, where the technology shall be engineered, that is where the product will be developed. Also, if he would like to know where your competitors are lying. They may be within the country, they may be anywhere globally. These points are very important for him to identify where your patent application should be filed and how many patent applications should be filed. The part of the patent strategy is also about determining the right routes to your patent application. You need to be open about your uh, financial situations and your go-to-market scenario accordingly. He needs to identify whether it is important to file the application as a portfolio, that is multiple applications covering each inventive concept separately or only some inventive concepts together and some separately. Or there could be a possibility that all of them in one patent application. Even though we are filing all of them in one patent application or so multiple inventive concepts in one application, we need to divide them uh, in a uh, later phase by filing a lot of divisional patent applications. Another aspect is uh, whether for filing internationally should you choose a Paris Convention route or PCT route. Uh, PCT route has some advantages of over Paris Convention route but also have an additional cost to it. So uh, for a patent attorney it is also important to look through your strategies uh, on the business side so that you, uh, he can decide a specific route for you. Also uh, it needs to be seen if there is any specific geography your uh, application should be expedited uh, uh, through any of the available mechanisms. So next important part is uh, when we have discussed about the patent strategy, next important part which comes up is the invention disclosure. How you should disclose the invention. The invention can be disclosed in a form or it can be disclosed during the inventor interview or there is a possibility that it could be a mix of both things. That uh, you first work out the invention disclosure form and then send it to the patent attorney, patent attorney then further request the inventor interview so that he can get more clarifications on your invention. Generally few things he asks for and it's very important for you to disclose them to him. One of the thing is what is the problem you are trying to solve. You have to elaborate over the problem. Uh, it could be a technical problem or it could be a, a business problem. But uh, you need to be elaborate about that problem. Then you have to identify whether that problem was solved by anyone previously or uh, you are the first time solving it. In case if uh, you know that the problem was solved by somebody, then you need to identify how those have been solved and uh, what are the advantages of the solution. Then uh, the, the movement is towards your solution. That means you need to first identify what was the unique element in your invention. Thereafter you need to elaborate over the unique element, how this unique element has been incorporated in the solution or how it is achieved in the solution. That means how in short is being incorporated in the solution. Further you need to identify what were the specific advantages of your solution. Thereafter it is also important to identify any alternatives which you would have identified 
to solve the problem. That is, you have already given your solution uh, through a unique element, but there may be a possibility you have, would have identified that the problem could be solved in any other possible way or not. These all answers of questions are very important and you need to be elaborate about it so that the pattern not only can bring out a well defined pattern application out of it. Thereafter, your pattern not only moves ahead and drafts the pattern specification. And he will require your support uh, for reviewing the pattern application. More specifically, the description part. Uh, I would like to let you know that. Uh, the pattern claims are the functional part of the pattern application and you need to uh, just help out your attorney to make it understood uh, to you and you should not move ahead and edit the pattern claims because if you try to put more efforts on editing the pattern claim probably it would be going to create a problem for your pattern application because your pattern attorney may have elaborated a better scope for you and if you try to um, edit it, probably you would be narrowed down uh, the application. And if you are narrowing down the scope of the application, it's not going to be good for the whole pattern application. So uh, it's very important for you to understand the scope of the claims, but you should not edit the claims in any way. So like uh, I want to sum up what and how the inventor or applicant should uh, have a conduct. First of all, uh, he should make the pattern not only about, aware about his business situation, including market, cash inflows, product movement, etc. Secondly, he should disclose the invention in completeness to the patent attorney. Thirdly, he should not edit the patent claims himself. That is going to be very better. That's all. With this, we come to the end of this session that is on forms and fees. See you in the next session. Thank you.